Hi, Misha here, and we come to episode 6 in our look at bounty hunters from Star Wars, the original trilogy, specifically the ones on the executor scene. But even though there were six bounty hunters there, we're only at episode 5 because Forlom and Zuckus were together. I like symmetry, so we need a sixth episode. So with that, let's talk about the meanest, the baddest bounty hunter of them all. Cad Bane. The most feared, the most successful, right? Except he wasn't in the original trilogy. As neat as his character design is, he didn't appear until the Clone Wars. So he's not relevant for today. So, we're doing Greedo. Um, he was the first bounty hunter we met in Star Wars, so that's something. And if you were to ask him, he thought he was better than Boba Fett. Although, others like Dengar, himself not exactly known for having the best reputation or highest esteem, considered Greedo, quote-unquote, delusional. So, let's talk about this Rodian. And was he really a successful bounty hunter, or even a bounty hunter at all? On to the spinny thing. Greedo was a Rodian from Rodia because that's where Rodians come from. This is a, well, non, I guess it is humanoid, but not human alien. Green skin, kind of blackish eyes, long fingertips with kind of suckers on the end, multiple ears, and said to have quite the aroma to non Rodians, they were supposedly quite smelly, but to themselves, that was kind of part of their allure. It also made them very tasty to uh, huts, at least in liquid form. The species was actually known for being good trackers, good hunters instinctually, because Rodeo is a pretty untamed world. So Rodians were known for being hired guns, thugs, and yes, bounty hunters. In fact, Greedo's father, Greedo the Elder, was quite a successful bounty hunter and tracker. Unfortunately, it's said that Greedo did not really inherit his skills. Born in 44 BBY, so 44 years before the Battle of Yavin, he was a young adult during the events of the prequels, and middle-aged during the original trilogy. About 5 foot 8 inches tall, although there's some disputes. Some have him a little shorter, some have him a little taller, and weighing about 160 to 165 pounds. Otherwise, a typical Rodian. He was born on Rodia, but not long after that, his family had to flee once his father was killed, assassinated by a clan rival who also stole his family's lands and wealth. And so his family, all around 200 members, escaped to a jungle world on three starships where they would reside for roughly a decade. But then their enemies would catch up with them and they would again flee with only one ship escaping with fewer than uh, 30 people on board. And from there they would stop off at Nar Shada, the hut moon, the smuggler moon. And this is where the young Greedo would first get exposed to the wider galaxy and kind of the underbelly of society. But they wouldn't be there long because by 32 BBY they would be on Tatooine where we hear of them in, in young Greedo reaching adolescence, kind of uh, messing around with pod racing and stuff. He was said to be rather quick-tempered, hot-headed. Yeah, not getting a great reputation for himself. 
As a teenager, he started to admire bounty hunters and the like and got into some petty crime. He was kind of a little bit of a thug and a pickpocket, and he also fell into some gambling and other vices and eventually started kind of hanging around the outskirts of Jabba's empire. By 22 BBY, the beginning of the Clone Wars, he was still hanging out on Tatooine and would take some low-level hired gun contracts, including a couple of missions to Coruscant during the Clone Wars, but it was pretty inactive and definitely not very effective. After the end of the Clone Wars and a few more jobs for Jabba and his henchmen, he would once again leave and go to Nar Shadda, and it was here he tried to hone his skills as a bounty hunter and try to break into the profession. He would actually team up with a couple of bounty hunters there, and results were mixed to say the least. He would learn a few things, but after a short time he was back to Tatooine because we do see him there during the time of Obi-Wan's exile. He also does start doing jobs for Jabba directly, including obtaining small bounties, capturing runaways from the huts, things of that nature. And after displeasing Jabba, he would be partnered with another young small-timer named Han Solo, and will become known as the Corellian Mission, and it didn't go well. In fact, Greedo made an ass out of himself, and so Han Solo left him behind on Corellia when he fled to the Millennium Falcon. And that's uh, pretty much where Greedo's at when we meet up with him here in A New Hope, Episode 4. When doing these videos, I always like to talk about the kit, the armor, equipment, the guns of these characters. Well, Greedo doesn't really have much going on. He's got a vest, he's got a holster, and that holds his DT-12 blaster pistol, made by Blastek, like most in Star Wars. This is actually considered a high-quality, even expensive blaster intended for military and police users only. Like a lot of people who are less than successful, he tried to make of it for having kind of a flashy gun. This was a, about a 50-shot weapon, range of about 90 meters in blaster mode. It also had a secondary mode of stun, with a short range of under 10 meters. And yeah, it was, a, it was just a, you know, average but good blaster pistol. Known for being reasonably powerful, well made, and uh, well respected. Too bad that Greedo was known by this time for being a pretty poor shot. In fact, he just didn't have a great reputation in general. He was known to be a bit of a complainer, a whinger, and according to Han Solo, underhanded and scummy. Some bounty hunters would give him the benefit of the doubt, just saying that he was kind of cursed with rotten luck. Some would even say that he was cautious and persistent, but others said he was easily spooked and uh, just not really aware of his surroundings. Didn't have the instinct, the knack for it to know when to get out of Dodge when there was uh, danger coming. Aside from his inborn, innate Rodian skills and talents yeah he didn't really have much extra the uh, blaster the real world prop was actually made from a ruger mark one pistol kind of neat and greedo himself 
it was obviously a costume. No, they actually found a green skin person to play him. No, he was actually played by a male in some scenes, typically the ones with Han Solo in A New Hope, and by a female for pickup shots when he was by himself, which is actually a good bit of the reason why there's a bit of a discrepancy in his weight and height. There's even some discrepancy in his fingers, but the canon has it as these long ones. So, after Jabba was upset with him, he would soon become upset with Han Solo when Solo jettisoned his spice. And Greedo was all too happy to take out that bounty and kind of even up with Han Solo for uh, leaving him on Corellia. Here he is giving you a Rodian salute. He was not very successful. He definitely thought more of himself from a young age. He wanted to be a bounty hunter, but he just didn't have the skills or practice. That said, other Rodians would, uh, would be pretty good bodyguards, hired thugs. In fact, Jabba had several. So when Han shot him before he even got to his blaster, not many people were sad to see the passing of old Greedo here. In fact, the owner of the cantina would grind up his body, again all those wonderful wonderful Rodian smells, and turn it into liquor for huts. Hey, they're slug people. But he did save the head, which he put on a spike outside the cantina, I guess to liven things up. The best it could be said is after his passing, a handful of fellow Tatooine bounty hunters did hold a small wake remembrance memorial eh, but he wasn't well liked or terribly successful though he did hang out in the game for 20 years so there is something to be said for that but in zero bby that would all come crashing to the end when greedo met han at the cantina it did not go the way he planned. His idea was to get the chump on Solo, fleece him for payment, i.e. the Millennium Falcon, and then probably either turn him over to Jabba or just kill him himself. Luckily for us, Han shot first, and that's kind of all she wrote. McClunky!